Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace and I'm joined by Agatha and we are going to be showing you something about equivalent exposures. What the heck is that? Well, it really helps us answer the question of what settings to use on our camera. In fact, a lot of people have asked me what's the correct combination of values to use, what shutter speed, what ISO value, what aperture value is correct. Well, the truth is there are a lot of different combinations you could use to get a correct exposure. Now, to illustrate this, we're going to have you stand right over here. I'm going to take a few pictures here. We're going to start with a really wide aperture, uh, actually at 1.4. And so look right at me, beautiful. So when I do that, my shutter speed's at 750. I'll go to f4. I'll take another shot. My shutter speed's at 125. I'll go to f8. And then my shutter speed now is at 30th of a second. I'll take a picture. Now, when we put these three images next to each other, you'll see that their exposures are almost the same, the same brightness levels. But there are some things that are going on inside those pictures that are not the same, and that's really how we determine what settings to use on our camera. Because if everything was just the same, we could just choose whatever, because when you open up the aperture, that lets in more light, the shutter speed increases, that restricts things, that sort of balances things out. If we close our aperture, that lets in less light, our shutter speed, uh, slows down so that balances everything out. So that balance is constantly going on when you're changing your shutter speed, your aperture value. So if everything looked the same, you could just choose whatever and it would work. But that's not what's happening here. So let's start by talking about what the intention of the photo. So what I want to do is I want to have a beautiful portrait of you. And so that means that I'm con concentrating on depth of field. I want the background to fall out of focus. So how do I do that? Well, I need to use a wide open aperture, a really small number. And so by doing that, I'm going to set my aperture to 1.4. So remember, if you're thinking about uh, depth of field, how much is in focus, the aperture is what you want to start with. So let me illustrate this to you. So at 1.4, look right at me. I'm going to focus on your eyes. Beautiful. I love that. So when we look at this, notice the background has fallen completely out of focus. If I would have shot this at F, let's say F8, same picture, I'll look right at me, beautiful. And now I'll take a shot. Look at the trees show up, everything in the background is totally clear. We don't like that. So in that scenario, what we wanna do is we wanna have a wide open aperture to control our depth of field. Well, what is the shutter doing? The shutter is controlling motion. And so if we really are concerned about motion, then the shutter is what we're gonna care about, not so much the aperture value. So to illustrate this, what we're gonna do is we're first gonna shoot something with a really uh, slow shutter. So you're gonna have to be sort of crazy in this. So I want you to be whipping your hair around. So now what's gonna happen here when we have a slow shutter speed? So I'm gonna set my shutter to 15th of a second. So I'm gonna, I want you to be a heavy metal rocker. Okay. So you're gonna move your head around and I do that. Uh, I'll do it again, perfect. And so look what's happening here. Her hair is completely blurred. It's just like motion. And so if you want that motion, that's awesome. You have a slow shutter speed. This is perfect for landscape photography where you have water or if you want to show some motion at night with Ferris wheels or car lights moving, that kind of stuff. Slow shutters are fantastic. But if you want to freeze motion, you need a fast shutter speed. So what I'm going to do here is let's set our shutter speed to, I'm going to set it to 750th of a second. So now we're going to do the same thing. Before you do that, let me focus. Okay. So now I want you to be a heavy metal rocker. Here we go. Blam, blam. Yeah, good. All right, now, <laughs> it looks sort of funny, but we can see that her features are totally frozen. Her hair is totally perfect. So come back on over here. So that's the answer really, is when you're looking at which settings to use, which one is the right combination of values, think about is it the uh, amount of focus, the depth of field that you wanna control? If so, start with your aperture value. If you wanna control the motion, then you want to start with your shutter speed, either slow or fast, and let the camera figure out the balance between the two. Now there's a couple of things that you might want to understand more fully, that is the uh, exposure triangle. I made a whole series on the exposure triangle, and this really dives a lot deeper into this topic, and so I've included a link to that in the description of this video, and it talks about some things. Specifically, it also talks about the ISO values that you should use, and so watch that series because it's a much broader answer to this question. Thanks so much for being a fantastic model and being a heavy metal, metal uh, headbanger for today. That was awesome. And uh, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Exploring Photography. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV. It's absolutely free. That way you don't miss a single thing. Thanks again, and I will see you next time.